This week on Bros, Bibles, and Beer. Not perfect, but God used them. Probably wasn't saved, probably burning in hell forever, but God still uses them. Okay, so he's basically saying you are uh, abdicating your responsibility to God as a Christian if you don't vote. Hitler's in power. God put him there. We're going to go down that road. Great leader. Because that's what the Bible says. Love God, rub your neighbor. <laughs> <laughs> if the human Jesus transported here and now, let's pretend he is going to vote. I just did. Kamala? Yeah. You want to know why? Why? Hey, everybody. Welcome to Bros, Bibles, and Beer. This is Jeff. It's episode 249. Zach, how's it going? Excellent. I'm ready to fail any political purity test imaginable tonight. <laughs> so pure. Andy? We're in international waters, so anything goes. That's right. And you, Jeff? I have no idea what international waters are. <laughs> We'll, we'll edit that out and clean it up. <laughs> Somehow we, we've just failed to hit that post every time. It's okay. We are professional podcasters. We get paid dollars, dollar dues. Yeah, uh, welcome. True. Welcome, listeners and viewers, to Bros, Bibles, and Beer, a podcast where we have serious talks about faith and culture without taking ourselves too seriously. I am Andy McCraw, joined by my friends and hosts, Zach Crater. And on the ones and twos tonight, JP, Jeff Pearson. Hola. Dude, what's it like being uh, being on the board? Your fingers are uh, fulfilled right now. <laughs> I don't know if they're fulfilled. Is that a thing? I do. <laughs> <laughs> Your fingers have been fulfilled. <laughs> uh, uh, first of all, I have very I have much difficulty doing two things at once. Uh, so I've got my fingers on the keys, uh, exchanging, uh, you know what? Let's go back to you. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you've got trouble doing more than one thing. So why don't we have you do seven things? Yeah. It's <laughs> worth, it's worth mentioning though. You're kind of in a self imposed exile. We did not put you behind no. the scenes here. But uh, it's been fun. This is number two, episode number two that we've done this yes. with the camera uh, on you, which is, it's fun. I like it. I do as well. As long yeah. as you like it, Jeff, because, I, you know. I like it. The couch is always yours. I, You know what? I was, it was too stagnant for me. <laughs> Wait, what did you do on the couch? <laughs> <laughs> he got sick of that, that sanctified couch. He didn't quite want to come over to this side, so... Uh, real quick, uh, listeners and viewers, especially if you're on YouTube, it really means a lot. If you uh, like and subscribe, smash that notification bell as well, because we've been digging into our analytics and we found that most of our listeners aren't subscribed yet. So if you do that, it's great because it helps the algorithm. It helps grow the podcast. It means a lot to us. And of course, as always, the comments are one of our favorite things. It really puts a uh, Fuel in the fire of our podcast. I agree, Andy. And I'll just furnace. use I'll use a uh, another F word. It's fantastic, right, Jeff? <laughs> I don't know what you mean. Okay, all right. Well, maybe you'll remember that word. But yeah, I, I do like the streamlined approach. Like, not so many cameras. Jeff ha Jeff has to juggle just a yeah. little little P and P later on, and and just the ones and twos. So we are in. The lead up to election week. That's what's happening. Yes. And real quick, though, I want to give Andy kudos because right now he's uh, his soul is dying a little bit. Oh, yeah. The is Dodgers, he for the green, green Party? Oh, no, this is Dodge. The, the, okay. <laughs> the green Party. <laughs> he's, a, he's a wilted Green Party member. <laughs> uh, the Dodgers are playing right now in what could be a sweep. When we started recording, the Yankees are up by one. Andy is a big Dodgers fan and... Uh, Thanks for sacrificing it. I have a feeling about this one. I think I think the Yankees are probably going to take this one. Yeah. So wait, wait, are you really a Dodger fan? I know you're a Laker fan, but yeah. are you really a big time Dodger fan? I own a 1965 Sandy Koufax baseball card. Whoa. They had a girl on their team? <laughs> Like, Jeff, you're old enough to remember. <laughs> guys yeah. were named Sandy back then. Come on, dude. <laughs> yeah, what do you mean? You were, you were there. <laughs> I'm not, this is... Uh, uh, okay, I got my Alzheimer's kicking in. <laughs> yes, uh, it's the only baseball team I've ever followed my entire life. All right, so baseball season, but... But, but the Dodgers don't make it easy to watch them because you have to during the year. 
because of their deals with uh, certain broadcasting networks. So it makes oh, it tough right. to follow. Yeah. Yeah. Anyway. All right. Yeah. So something's c- happening. Okay. Something's coming around the corner, which is the election. Yes. Maybe when you watch this slash listen to it, it will already have happened. But I think things we're going to talk about tonight will be timeless. And I hope so. Even though it's the week before the election, uh, timeless truths will be exposed and uh, all brought to you by us, your favorite neighborhood bros. Um, but I did come across uh, something that was going around the X, the Brian Zahn Christian Voters Guide that he came up with like 10 or 12 years ago. And he's like, hey, I remembered I wrote this a while back. Here it is again. And people were sharing it like crazy. So I thought we could kind of do like a rapid fire like you do, Jeff. But I'm down. uh, You read it and then you can partake too, Jeff, where just quick reactions, whether you have negative thoughts, positive thoughts about each point. I think there's 10 of them. And we can kind of go from there and just make it quick, pithy responses, yay or nay. Wait, I I get to be involved? Yeah. You You get it, Oh my gosh. Oh, yeah. Okay. Jeff. <laughs> you did this to yourself. All right, here we go. <laughs> <laughs> you soiled this seat, so now you're over there. <laughs> All right. Well, this is the Christian's, uh, sorry, the Christian Voter's Guide. The Christian Voter's Guide by Brian Zahn. Okay, number one. Ready? Oh, he's a pastor of Word of Life Church in, in Missouri. Yeah, yeah. Uh, okay. okay. Uh, number one. The political process, while necessary, has little to do with how God is saving the world. Anybody? I agree. Yeah, I agree. Yeah, I concur. Okay. All right. That was easy. (laughs) Next one. Next one. (laughs) The fate of the kingdom of God does not depend upon political contests. Yeah. 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 I'm still trying to comprehend that. <laughs> Actually, maybe, maybe I could find, I could probably steel man the opposite view of that, but we're not going to do it now. But you're breaking the rules of the I game. I am breaking the rules of the game. Yep. I pass. Decisions matter. How about that? Yes, decisions matter. And they affect the world. Okay. Don't be naive. Political parties are more interested in Christian voters than they are in Christian values. Oh, yeah. For sure. hundred percent. And church, put that on churches. Churches are more interested in butts and seats than Christian values sometimes. Yeah. I think that they're more interested in political parties are more interested in raising money. Forget the Christian voters and values. You know, all right. Uh, number four, the bottom line for political parties is power. Power. The bottom line for a Christian is love. And therein lies the rub. Dude, I like like the way you just said love and then rub. Uh, can I just go with that? I'm very positive on that one. Did you editorialize the tail end of that one? <laughs> no, I didn't. Okay, One more time. The bottom line for political parties is power. The bottom line for a Christian, for a Christian is love. And therein lies the rub. Love God, love your neighbor. Pa- I agree. Power or love? Love God, rub your neighbor. <laughs> <laughs> that's the power of love oh, dad pawn number one of the night uh yeah i'll agree with that that's fine little Huey not Lewis. controversial so far nothing controversial to all of us well this was a this is terrible podcast way to go jeff really fantastic all right, keep going while in pursuit of the ring of power Ooh. you are not permitted to abandon the sermon on the mount yeah 100 percent I do like the Ring of Power, and I've used it before. How do you use it? Tolkien was on to something when, uh, in pursuit of like, they're going to destroy the Ring of Power, and then like people like Boromir falls a little bit, and he's like, wait a second, we are giving away something so good that I could, we could use to restore the world of men, I think he says some version of that, because men are sort of, they've lost their way. Maybe it's a little analogous to these days. Well, even Gandalf recognizes it at the beginning when he tries to give it to him. Yeah. And he's like, nope, no, yeah. no, 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 no. Do not give it to me. And then he kicks Bilbo because he's tiny. Yeah. yeah I there's, remember that. Yeah. It's there's such respo- Yeah. There's such responsibility um, with the ring. All right. That, you, I agree with that more than I d- disagree. What's the Sermon on the Mount? All right. Number six. <laughs> number six. <laughs> Number six, if you're, 
there's no lightning coming down, is there? If your political No, I'm sitting over here, you're good. <laughs> okay. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, but I'm gonna get hit by your lightning bolt. If your political passion makes it hard for you to love your neighbor as yourself. Okay, I'm sorry, I'm getting lost at that. If your political passion makes it hard for you to love your neighbor as yourself. Or oh, rub. Okay. You need to turn it down a notch. Oh, uh, I like that. That's good. There's a lot of people who need to turn it down a notch. Yeah. Also, it only works by it, me saying if that, you love do I, yourself well. By me saying that, does that mean I need to turn it down a notch? Oh, no, it's self-defeating. <laughs> I can't say it about someone. Oh. So it's a double-edged sword. Yeah, those other people need to do that. Yeah. <laughs> They're the worst. <laughs> Idiots. Uh, gosh, I've been thinking about that a lot, too. There's so much othering that's going on right now. That one's so good. My favorite so far. Yeah. All right, Jeff. I feel so. I kind of feel sorry for the other side. Anyway, number seven. <laughs> Your task is to bring the salt of Christian civility to an ugly and acrimonious political process. Your task is to bring the salt of Christian Just keep repeating it until one of us says something. I know. Like, I'm, I'm sorry. I, well, I'm hesitating. There's like, some $20 what is, words there. Yeah, what, exactly. What is considered Christian civility? Is that How is that different than civility? Do you, What do you guys think? Uh, it kind of makes me think of, uh, what is it, the movie Divergent, uh, where the, there's the group that's kind of the giving and helpers, and they... You know, they're they're within their, their civility is just to be there and help and be the helping hand, and I so I think that's the Christian civility. I think c- civility is you know you're working within the entire environment, including government, politics, and your community, which I don't think. I think we're kind of. What do you mean, not, work, working within? Um. Where those things have actually impact, like within the, within the, we're a part of the civil, you'd be a part of the civil discourse, you'd be a part of, um, you know, government politicians, you'd be, you know, there'd be action. And- but there's plenty of those people that are in there that are not civil, right? I mean, that's, that's what we're seeing now. So what's the civility portion in there oh you're taking the actual word oh you mean like civility civic. civil like civil well, no discourse. just to be i mean ultimately there's a when i th- when i think of just the i'll call it passive christian way it's like we're, we're not supposed to be a part of this we're supposed to be outside of this and you know we just need to help people and provide and and just be there and be the hands and feet of jesus and then there, then there's the those that are in it. Like you're, you're maybe you're not a Christian. You're just you're one of those um, citizens. You're an yeah. American citizen, and and it's a whole lot more than than what a Christian might be doing and acting within the yeah. community. And what I thought of immediately was like on the debate stage, if someone said. Like would would uh would it be considered Christian civility to not point out your um, opponent's faults in the in a debate? Yeah, interesting question. It, it, I I would com- I would agree. I mean, there's and also to poke fun, like there's poke fun to gain an advantage to gain leverage, even if. Even if you're not like, that's why I'm just caught up on it. Like, I don't know if there is there a difference between civility and Christian civility. I don't know if there is. Civility in my mind is like acting with respect towards one another. It's not um, and, you, and, and in good faith, respect and good faith. Yeah, and you can push back respectfully. Yeah, you can point out flaws and faults respectfully. Um, and and obviously we see that you can do it disrespectfully. So. You can Maybe say not a difference. You can say anything you want as long as it's followed by with all due respect. All due respect. <laughs> I said with all due respect, your hat looks stupid. Do you, do you guys feel <laughs> There's no logo on it? Do you guys feel that there's a, a different regard for people at a different respect is given by those that are Christian compared to 
just the the Joe on the corner? No. Who's that, a good person? There should be. But no, like ex- there's plenty of examples of, well, in this political season, there's plenty of examples of professed Christians that act like assholes on the internet. Maybe they're or, not enacting Christian civility themselves. True. And I'm not saying you can't, obviously you, you can make plenty of mistakes. You can be a jerk and be a Christian. I, I'm not doing the, you're, no, that's you're a different out, question. But. It's that I'm just, I'm just curious. Like, is there a difference between Christian civility and civility? I don't know if there is. Maybe it's so, it's kind of like love, it like, like true agape love doesn't need to like wear the flag of Jesus or Christianity when it, when it's that kind of love and it's taking action in the world. I don't care what label you put on it. Yeah. It's, that's true love and that that's true Christ-like love, whatever you want to call it. True love. Even if Richard Dawkins, <clears throat> if Richard Dawkins does it, Dawkins, articulate, I'm doing it, guys. I'm making words up. I'm Dude, changing words. Daryl Dawkins. <laughs> Daryl Dawkins. From the Atlanta Braves, known for breaking backboards in the 80s in the NBA. Chocolate Thunder is what they used to call him. Yeah. Daryl Dawkins. Next, this, next question. Okay. <laughs> We're all violating the rules now. To dismember the body of Christ over politics is a grievous sin. Uh, Brian Zond is ranking sins, which I'm all for. Grievous. Is that a above or below treacherous sin? I think that was a character in Star Wars. Treacherous? Grievous? Grieves? Grievous (laughs) sins. Grievous sins. Uh, Actually, a pastor in the Church of Satan was Lucius Lucian Greaves, I think. Lucius Greaves was hey guys, somebody for the Church of Satan. What? Guys, number nine. I think it's <laughs> we not, just, we're, I think it's no bueno. We're I'll, skipping. I'll, I'll agree. No bueno. <clears throat> we're skipping. Oh, yeah. No, we see. We do see. Do no, see. Real quick. I agree. And what we're seeing now that hurts my heart, if I can get emotional and authentic with you guys. Do you need me to play some music? Can I be honest? Uh, for once. <laughs> <laughs> Um, there's a lot of mostly, I confess, I mostly see it from the right side of Christianity where it's like, you can't be a Christian and vote Democrat, but you see a lot of it from the left. Um, like how could you as a Christian support Donald Trump for a reason X, Y, and Z? And so that's, that's happening in a bipartisan way, which normally, you know, we like bipartisanship, but that's not a good one. And I agree with Brian's on BZ, BZ for the win. Go ahead. (laughs) Where are we at? 9 out of 10? 10 out of 10? Number 9. Number 9. Exercise your liberty to vote your conscience and conviction while accepting that other Christians will do the same and vote differently <gasps> than you. Kind of what you were getting at here. Yeah. Okay, those could be piggybacks. <clears throat> sure. Yes. All right. Go ahead. Or unless you have commentary, Jeff. I don't have any commentary. Number 10. Last one. It's more important that your soul... By the way, what a rapid fire we're doing here. <laughs> it's more... It's more important... Vapid fire. <laughs> it's more important that your soul be filled with love than it is for your political team to win the game. God, give me a break. And that's going to be tested in just a few days, or maybe even after the fact. Jeff, what do you think about that one? Speak freely. I mean, I'm... Filled with love. Can you be uh, honest, Jeff, for once? Yeah, for once. <clears throat> Can you just be honest, Jeff? <laughs> <Okay>. <laughs> just be honest. So I do want my political team to win. Um, and I'm also filled with love. Is it more important? Yes. If I would felt like my team was going off the rails, then I would I would back away and question. I'm, I'm convicted about, you know, who I am, what team I'm on. Um, and... I have love for the other side. Like I wish them the best. And I hope either, either way um, come November 5th that, you know, everybody can land November 6th and be like, okay, Hey, that was the political process. This is America. Let's move forward. 
That might be the funniest thing you say all night. <laughs> <laughs> all right, I let, agree with you. I totally agree with you. But I wish I wish that were true. All right, let's stop the recording. I'm with you. We're, let's stop the recording, Jeff. No, you can tell us what you really want to say. <laughs> <laughs> you can tell us, tell us the real. What's the, what's the real one that you wanted to say though? Okay. Yeah. So all, all eyes are bows. All hey. ears are closed. Okay. What I really wanted to say is, if you feel like you really want to hate your enemy, can I just just slip your hand just up slip in your the hand back? Up. I see that I hand. See that. <laughs> I see, I see that, that head. head. I see that head. Uh, I see that one. I feel like I'm. St- <laughs> I feel like I'm somewhere in the middle of lyrics of Rage Against the Machine. It's just uh, there's something in there that it's like, uh, what is it? Do yeah, yeah. Funny do, story. Do, do. My good friend John Hughes went to high school with Zach De La Rocha <laughs> from. I'm waiting uh, for the funny part. From uh, Rage Against the Machine, the Whoa. lead singer. And he said that he was a quiet, preppy soccer player. And then he got unleashed. Also, Will Ferrell went to his high school. Oh. And he was exactly who you think he'd be. Isn't that a isn't that crazy? Yeah. Uni- University High School in Irvine. Uh, Irvine, Irvine, California. Oh, yeah. yeah. Also, what a stupid name for high school. Also... Like, why? I go to elementary college. <laughs> <laughs> well, they just want, I mean, it's You're just prepping them. Okay, hold on. That's Irvine. So they know that, first of all, Irvine is a high percentage Asian community, high level academics. Um, if Racist. It, if it wasn't a, if you, if you got a 4.5. You, you just call white people dumb? Yeah. Uh, relatively <laughs> speaking, uh, in general, but that would, I mean, calling a, a high school in Irvine university high, I totally get it. It's, it is what it is. And, you know, we should, we're calling our high schools, uh, we're baked high school. And that's just an example of a white high school. And maybe, I don't know, maybe. No, that was Dana Hills. By, that's where I went. By, by Sailor or something like that. I went to Dana Pills. <laughs> hey, so did I for one year. They had way too many pills. So, so I got to get out of there. Okay. I deeply regret raising this point. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> okay. Made a, Bros, Bibles, yeah. and Beer. We've made a <laughs> huge mistake. <laughs> made a huge mistake. <laughs> <laughs> that part brought to you by Going Sideways. Going Sideways. Also, a fun out. fact about Zach De La Rocha. Sure. Um, Coda de Casa. I think he had a house in Coda oh de Casa in the heyday of Rage Against the Machine. This could be wrong. So feel free to Google me right or wrong, audience. We're not going to do it now. Uh, but I just love that the dichotomy of like fighting the man while you are oh. simultaneously the man, which he wouldn't be the first person to do well, that. A friend of ours in Lincoln Park lived in lives in Ladera still, <laughs> and I remember at the height of their uh, at the height of their heightness. I don't know what you call their popularity. Was Lincoln Park like yeah. royal? Were they, were they preaching against Dude, that I sort of thing Lincoln too? Though Park. what I don't know if they that feels like that. less of a contradiction than maybe than maybe. the rage. Yeah. yeah. Well, you definitely everything's less than rage. Yeah. Yeah, that one is a heavy contradiction. Okay. Anyway, uh, now we've got y- you did a little homework. Thank yeah. you, Zach. Like you do. So we basically agreed on all those. Yeah, I don't think there was nothing was t- wildly controversial. What would be interesting to see is if we actually lived those things out. But that's and another story. I actually don't hate that we disagreed because maybe they'll we be- didn't disagree. Yeah, yeah. I I actually kind of like maybe I misspoke. The fact that we it, it would have been good pod to disagree on some of those things. We might have some disagreements about a couple clips we play and, and where the conversation goes on, which we didn't even tease this at the beginning, but it will be in the show title. We talked, w- it's going to be election. Would, would Jesus vote? Um, hey, I if would, he did, who would he vote for? I think the Christian civility and civility, I, I think there was some disagreement there. I think the, expecta- I think the expectation for uh, Christians is to act a certain way that would throw people that aren't Christians off. That, I mean... That's where I would disagree. I think that it does it happen. Um, I think the pandemic proved that no, not so much. The majority of people just go sideways and and fall into you know normalcy within their community, and and people yeah. would not be able to identify them as as Christians. I think you might be right, but like, what's an example of it? That's where I like caught myself wondering. So just going back to. The beginning of the pandemic, when there was the um, the officer that 
you know, held down the the guy in the street and he ended up dying. And, and, uh, you know, I had, I think I had Derek Chauvin. Yes. <laughs> and Floyd. Yeah, uh, sure. That was, was that pandemic time? Yeah. Time is just weird for me. Oh, when I look that, back five years lo- ago, it's weird. Yeah. I, I lost, I lost 40. I don't even know. I'm, I think I'm, over I'm not even sure I'm here. <laughs> <laughs> However, in that moment, I, I, during that time, moment being like over that span of, of 12 to 18 months, the idea of asking people questions and immediately when it, everything started, as opposed to throwing daggers at people um, like you're wrong and getting in the middle of, you know, our community, like literally our church community, city, within my school district, within my workplace. It was brutal. I'm like, there is no way anybody would have looked at me and been like, in fact, the people I was arguing with were other Christians in a really terrible way. That doesn't sound like civility. No, but that, right. And so that's my point is when, you know, we were pressed a little bit as, as people, we forgot we were put in such a situation that I think we, there was a Christian civility that should have come out of it and it didn't. Yeah. Oh yeah, for sure. I'm not, I'm not disagreeing with you. That, so I, Christians that, act like assholes all the time, just like normal people. But that's not supposed to be the case. No, it's not. I think that again, where I, I'm just hung up is my, my point's a little bit different than that. It's, it's oh, like, okay. I don't, I don't know what the, like the key difference is if someone said this is civility Versus Christian civility. It'd be, well, I think and maybe it doesn't matter. No, well, I maybe think it's, it's if you, Andy, if you were racing on the street in your beautiful Porsche, uh, <laughs> thank you, <laughs> Porsche, and and you were racing somebody you won. It was like phenomenal. I mean, you were on rails around the corners, accelerating. But the difference between that. And somebody who is like an F one driver at on in a high octane uh, automobile that is a professional. When I compare this to like the parallel to Christian civility, is there's a refined nature in the way that they drive, and the expectation of anybody watching. And so, when put in any situation behind the wheel, they'll they will perform at a level that's beyond anybody's even expectations and and wonder like how can you do that i like the analogy i, I here's where i'm struggling in general it's like i'm even trying to think of an example in my head that's why i tried to use the debate like imagine that you had a christian versus a non-christian in a political debate and if both of them said we are going to hold ourselves to our definitions of civility, how, would it look different in how the two of them interact with each other in, in that debate? Would there be a difference if one if the Christian said, I'm going to act on Christian civility, and the non-Christian said, I'm going to act on my concept of civility? Does that debate show a stark contrast between the two? I don't think so. I don't think it does either. That's why I'm like I don't think so. I mean it's it's kind of like in the vein of all truth is God's truth. If something is true, it, it doesn't need to be like like growing up, it's like make sure everyone sees us pray before a meal so they know that we're we're giving thanks to God. Um as opposed to like what if you're just grateful for the food yeah. and you're all in it together and you're sharing a meal together, whether you do that or not, you you're still grateful for it. And it still means the same. The only difference is you were trying to put the God stamp on it. So maybe the, it's a little bit like that. Like civility is civility, and yeah, but if you has go- a definition, and and if you're a Christian and you're civil, Christian civility will just be civility. And if somebody doesn't have happen to have the Christian cultural cultural background or backdrop that they grew up in, they can still be civil, and it will look a lot like being a Christian. Only maybe they use different language to describe it. Okay. So if we go back like in, Spanish. <laughs> so, so, so if we go if we go back in time in presidents Exactly Jimmy Carter. Jimmy Carter was considered one of the weakest presidents that the United States has, has ever had. Yeah. And 
too nice, too Christian, too Baptist. <laughs> and and but his he had a Christian civility. People felt like they could take advantage of him. He's just too nice. He's not gonna he's not gonna make the hard choices. And that was, I mean, so when I think of Christian mm. civility, I could, you know, look at him as a president. When I look at Bill Clinton, I'm like, not, there's not Christian civility there when you can just look at a, you know, a television and speak to Americans and, and, you know, talk this craziness. And then it becomes a, a joke for the rest of, you know, our lives in, you know, situations that happen at the White House. I'm like, that's civil, that's, that's kind of, the world and then jimmy carter would be the example of of christian civility especially yeah. as a president yeah and we don't like we don't like our leaders like that we like the top down like powerful approach like i'm gonna tell them the way it oh, is so can civility and assertiveness not co coexist <clears throat> i don't know i think it can sure i mean no it, i think it can i think there's a heart there's a I mean, I'm bringing up Bill Clinton as is a harsh example. Actually, vice presidential debate. Sorry, I interrupted you. No, go ahead. Actually, I'm more interested in that. The, that was like two guys that, I mean, I'm guessing, I don't know a lot about either gentleman. I know J.D. Vance wears the banner of Christianity. Tim Waltz, I'm guessing, would call himself a Christian. What, whether he does or not, that debate was civil. Yeah. Like, and there was assertiveness. So there's your answer, I think. There's my answer to your question. Thanks. I knew my own answer, but yeah. Okay. That's, well, then I, why ask? <laughs> <laughs> no, I, I think I think oftentimes when you see uh, strong leaders who are Christians, they are assertive and they can do that in a way that is totally civil. I don't. I don't equate civility with weakness. Yeah. It, they both versions can coexist. You can be uncivil and weak or powerful, and you can be civil and weak or powerful. Yeah. In 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 both of those. So they're one does not require the other. Okay. All right. Jimmy Carter, weak and civil. Yes, but not assertive. He he lacks he lacked some strength in his rhetoric Hence as a president. Yep. yep. Yeah, I agree. I agree with you on that. And that's that is the common However, well well respected and and I believe he passed well meaning not too long ago, just well respected Christian man who, you know, left a, a good is he legacy. Dead? I think, I think, I think, I'm not 100% well, sure. He's old AF either way. And he there's will, no way to know. He will rest in peace. There's no <laughs> way to know. No it's way unknowable. To know. No, but I will say also, uh, when Jesus Christ, when will you say it? I will say it. Talk about Christian civility. Okay, Jesus Let's Christ, get to Jesus weak. Christ. Weak. He couldn't even, uh, I like my saviors who uh, overthrow the government. I don't like my saviors <laughs> who bow down and hang themselves on a cross. <laughs> All right. I got a clip. Can we do this? Should we do this? Yeah, let's do All it. Right. I'm All excited right. for this. Now, we got we had one of our bigger shorts uh, and <laughs> podcast clips was... Adam Sandler's. We all got a pair of Adam Sandler shorts. Just giant <laughs> Sorry, shorts. These are my big shorts. I wear when I, when I feel like a big boy. You like my big boy uh, shorts? I love that I have no idea what you guys are talking Adam about. Sandler, <laughs> what, yeah. Adam Sandler's shorts are his dinner pants, They're, I think. Oh, he just comically wore, large. Below he, the knees. He wears them yeah. everywhere. They're like mid-shin. Basically, yeah. any wardrobe he's in in a movie is how he dresses. And I love that about him. Yeah, some faded t-shirt that's three sizes too large. You know that, Jeff. <laughs> why, are you guys, why are you guys picking on me? <laughs> why are you doing this? Barely. Okay. So Josh Howerton, Lake Point Church yeah. in Texas. Uh, we had we did a comparison clip where he... We, we called it plagiarism because he basically copied an apology, but he's friends with the pastor with whom he copied the apology and basically said, yeah, I leaned on him for help. And I'm like, apparently word for word. Anyway, that that one did really well for us, but felt like a piggyback more than a, just a leaning on. It did, it did, but that was plagiarism in English 101. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Whatever the, I mean, if you can't just say you're sorry on your own terms, okay. Moving on though, we have a clip here because he did have a sermon that he did recently on how to vote like Jesus, and so I pulled a couple clips from it because it's provocative and. 
you know, whatever we hear tonight, I I don't like this particular style of pastoring. It, this is more of like a political speech than a... Actually, I'm not positive it was a Sunday morning. If it wasn't a Sunday morning, forgive me. But if this stuff happens on Sunday morning, it's like, you're not being a pastor. You're a political operative. I think we can go back... And I didn't disagree with all of it. Oh. We but. should watch a clip and then react to it. But I, I will say we... I think we... <laughs> <laughs> oh, my iPad just died. I'm just kidding. I think we can go back in uh, time. the historical uh, voting, uh, I don't know, not reg- register, or, you know, the just the statistics and see how Jesus huh? did vote. I'm pretty sure they they have that back in the Roman Empire. I think so, yeah. Yeah. Just check your abacus. <laughs> they, so, they had to put a blood blood fingerprint. Jeff, can you pull up the... Uh, Here we vidya? go. Thank you, sir. So in the Bible, God uh, has established three institutions that he establishes in the Bible. God Pause establishes it. the family in the book. So just so everybody knows, that's Elon Musk's little brother. All right, continue. This is Genesis 2. <laughs> Andy, God stop with that look. The church. the church is officially established in the book of Acts. And then the Bible also teaches that the government was God's idea, that God established the state, the institution of the state. I want you to see this. This is from Romans chapter 13. It says, let everyone be subject to the governing authorities because those authorities, the authorities that exist, have been established by God. So in all these clips... I, I have them time stamped. I don't have the end point. So it's really just, okay. that was kind of a general part. Romans 13, Christians love to use this one. Did anybody fact check this? When their, when their president You're gets You're the in, producer. This is your job. That hey, Actually. <clears throat> look it up, Jamie. So <laughs> <laughs> I'm on it. <laughs> so that you're, are you going to fact check that verse? <laughs> yeah. Uh, let everyone be subject to Did the Paul governing really authorities. Did Paul really say that? Was Paul really talking about that? I, the authorities that I don't pretend to right. understand this particular verse, given that Paul later goes on to be executed by the state, presumably for not following the state. Not fact-checking. I mean, do you guys have any thoughts on that? Like, Paul, Paul died. He was martyred. He did what? It, well, he stuck to his guns. Jesus, you can make an argument, like whatever cosmically is going on with God redeeming the world through Jesus' death and resurrection, in physical, tangible terms, Jesus was killed uh, with a partnership between some of the, the Jewish authorities of the day and the state. He doesn't, at- he, well, he doesn't attempt to subvert the governing authorities. Uh, not to survive. There's a couple of nuggets like the the go the extra mile and... If somebody wants their cloak, give it to them. And there's some Roman undertones of subverting Roman authority there. Um, but yeah, but that's a kill him with save kindness. His life. That's well, not to not to break any laws either. Yeah. So he he doesn't break any laws. I mean, the subversion is more like I'm gonna. It's kill him with kindness, right? Yeah. Um, or I I'd have more to say about that, but uh, we won't do that right now. Um, but do, I I I could keep. <laughs> I so, can keep word salading. I got a lot of thoughts. No, it's but okay. Go the, ahead. The part that probably sticks out is, I'm I'm guessing for you is that uh, the authorities that have exist have been established by God. And what does that mean? Yeah, what does that mean? Because oftentimes, and in, in my personal context, that gets thrown around when our person is in power, but we seem to forget this verse when the other person's in power, the so, other team is in power. So the the quick, easy test for this is, has God established dictators? Yeah. And I I say yes, as in, that's a good test. (laughs) I'm not agreeing. (laughs) I caught myself. I'm glad I caught myself. I... My personal uh, theology is no. You can email him, Zach at Bros Bibles Beer. He believes that Hitler came from God. I wouldn't call myself a process theologian, but the idea of the world is in process and the world is constantly in creation mode where choices matter. Um, I am sympathetic to that. So the idea of God ordaining everything good and bad in the world, uh, while you can find some script biblical support for that, you can find plenty of examples where that's not the case. And, and I definitely lean towards, um, no, what is what it, what does it look like to be what did Christ do? How did Christ operate in the world? 
And what if we interpret everything else through that? And does that change things? Maybe. Jeff, do you have something yeah. to say? <clears throat> yeah. So I, I did look up the, um, the governing authorities in the Bible and, you know, all form, all forms of government, including rulers and leaders are established by God and should be submitted to by citizens. Just going down to limits to authority while submission is encouraged, the Bible also implies that government authority is not absolute and should not contradict God's laws. And that's a slippery slope in our society in that there are things that are happening within government that might possibly be going against God's laws. Why would God establish an authority that he wants you to not go, to well, not follow with, right? Well, the, the people are the governing authority and, and so uh, of government. So it's like we have government and humans are running for that us government. right in, in for America in the perfect, in the best sense, sure. it's working well is yes, they represent the will of the people, whether that happens or not. I think it's pretty clear as it doesn't. Right. But that's at least the direction in the biblical context. And where I have kind of a rub with Josh is, like rub your neighbor? Yeah, rub your neighbor. I love that that's the theme. Um, Thou shalt rub your neighbor. And literally the way I mispronounce words sometimes, I will say rub your neighbor and I'll <laughs> I'll think I said love to one of you guys. I'll catch it. Don't worry. I'll, I'll pick that oh. up. I'm watching. I'm that, is, that is bl- Look at you. That's so, blasphemy can, of the Holy Spirit there, Zach. Take off the PMP real quick, but I do have a Bible verse to read about um, biblical stuff. Um, so Israel asked God for a king and Samuel was the prophet that was in his old age. Israel was, uh, going about it. This is a, a little bit of a long passage, but I think it's worth it for the context. Well, let's Actually, just act like, it? let's just act like you're sure. the government, Zach, and we're going to submit to... Would you like me to read it? Sure. Yes. You read <laughs> it because I'm going to mispronounce things. Okay. Israel asks God for a, this is a, asks God for a long Oh, well, I don't know what that's about. That's weird. I'm first, dyslexic. First Samuel uh, 8, 21, 8, 4, <laughs> first Samuel chapter 4, 8 through 21. I feel like we're in second grade. I'm like, hey, Andy, it's your time to read. I hand him a paper you know what? and it has like penises drawn on it. Why don't like, we just, yeah, yeah, there's no words. You guys, there's no words on here. It's just. <laughs> and he's just going to yes and my it's premise. A picture, Go. It's a picture book. I feel like I'm in super bad right now. <laughs> uh, so all the elders of Israel gathered together and came to Samuel at Ramah. They said to him, you are old. <laughs> your sons do not follow your ways. Lame. Right, Jeff? Now point a king t- to lead us, such as all the other nations have. But when they said, give us a king to lead us, this displeased Samuel. So he prayed to the Lord and the Lord said to him, listen to all the, that the people are saying to you. It is not that you have been, or sorry, it is not you that they have rejected, but they have rejected me as their king, as they have done from the day I brought them up out of Egypt until this day, forsaking me and serving other gods. So they are doing to you. Now listen to them, but warn them solemnly and let them know what the king who will reign over them will claim as his rights. Samuel told all the words of the Lord to the people who were asking him for a king. He said, this is what the king who will reign over you will claim as his rights. He will take your sons. He will make them serve with his chariots and horses, and he will run in front of his chariots. Or sorry, they will run in front of his chariots. Some he will assign to be commanders of thousands and commanders of fifties and others to plow his ground and reap his harvest and still others to make weapons of war and equipment for his chariots. He will take your daughters to be perfumers and cooks and bakers. Genderist. (laughs) (laughs) More blasphemy. He will take the best of your fields and vineyards and olive groves and give them to his attendants. He will take a tenth of your grain and of your vintage and give it to his officials and, and attendants. Your male and female servants and the best of your cattle and donkeys he will take for his own use. He will take a tenth of your flocks and you yourselves will become his slaves. When that day comes, you will cry out for relief from the king you have chosen, but the Lord will not answer you in that day. But the people refused, refused to listen to Samuel. No, they said, we want a king over us. 
then we will be like all the other nations with the king to lead us and to go out before us and fight our battles. When Samuel heard all that the people had said, he repeated it before the Lord. The Lord answered, listen to them and give them a king. Yeah. And I think, I think that's a, I love that. And now I'm going to, I'm going to hand out the comprehension test for that, that Andy just read. Well, he will fight all our battles, even though mm. what God told Samuel to say is like, hey, let him know he's going to send you to war. He's going to take your shit. Is this what you want? It, it seems like God is sort of acquiescing to the people. All right. You want to be like other nations. You don't want me as your king. Have your own king. Fine. See you how go. that goes for you, douchebags. Which is uh, s- uh, our old former pastor Todd. That's my paraphrase. In case you're share, <laughs> share definition of God's wrath, which is giving you over to your your sins, and so this is consequences. Yeah, the consequences of your sins, which is to say, all right, this is what you've asked for. I I won't protect you. And so I th- I think that runs contrary to what Josh is doing with this. Uh, and this is the problem with biblical inerrancy is where like any one verse has to be the same authoritatively than the other. And so you read Paul in Romans 13, it seems pretty clear. Like God, no, God establishes all authorities and maybe he does. But right now, my opinion is that either Paul was wrong or maybe given that it's a letter to the Romans, is it possible that he wanted the letter to be circulated without the Roman authorities freaking out? And so he's throwing them a bone like, Hey, make sure you follow these guys over here. Even though the letter to the Romans is like this brilliant discourse on like how to be like Christ in the world that they were living. Yeah. Or is it even just that God has established the concept of authority and that it exists and that. Yeah. Do you, you, you just love filling in those gaps, Zach? The what ifs. You, you love it. Because the Bible, the Bible does leave, it leaves room for what ifs. It, well. It, but it's like it's like mad opinion. libs. It's mad libs. You just fill in the fill in the yeah, open. Just make it what you want. <laughs> yeah, right. That's exactly what I'm saying. You, you know Jeff, what I'm talking you get about. Me now. Yeah. <laughs> Bla- blasphemy of the blasphemy. Holy Spirit. Yeah, blasphemy, bro. Holy spigot. All right, let's get um, let's get Josh's full clip rolling here. Let's let's let I, him lay out his thing. Yeah, we're gonna say something. Hey, yeah, I was gonna say. You know, by the way, it's I think it's fascinating that the authority is given to the government. And the government is like, well, you know, majority rules, and this is the government because we've all voted them in. However, when it comes to Christian, being a Christian, we're we're the minority, and we're to act, you know, we're to act a certain way, hopefully naturally, just because from the Holy Spirit. But the government and and Christians have they there's a conflict there. In that the majority, because government is not Christian, I don't know if that was the hope of God, but it doesn't seem like it's, it, it seems like the two sides are beset against each other. And that's, that I don't understand. I don't comprehend, hey, follow the government, do what the government tells you, give to the government, give, you know, give to Caesar, you know, what is his, and, and like give to God what is God's. And I'm like, why was that set up that way? What does the opposite look like? Maybe that's why. It's like husbands and wives. It's like, is it, was it all set up this way? Because there's uh, there those are complete that. the well, the opposites the the idea of the idea of opposites in now we are forced to we're not like I'm um, words like endure and you know, coexist. end up coming through. It's like, yes, there's yes. Coexist, but respond in a way that's, that's of the Holy spirit, even though th- this, th- that doesn't make any sense why this is, but I'm going to respond in the way that Jesus would respond and it certainly wouldn't, it would just be out of, I I hate to say not passiveness, but there's something about it. It's like, you just go in and do what you're doing and I'm going to continue to do what I'm doing. Girls barely like football. That like that. <laughs> I think that's exactly correct. <laughs> oh, well, I just imagine like there is an idea of, of, oh, 
if if I thought of Christians in a not your version of anarchy, but like in an anarchist sense where they're constantly going against the government, like I imagine what that world looks like. And that feels like chaos, right? Where it's like, I'm not respecting government's laws. I'm doing whatever I want to do. Anytime the government does or says anything, I'm consistently against it. Right. And, and yes. I, I imagine that, and that doesn't, that doesn't feel like Christian or non-Christian civility. And so maybe that's, maybe that's the kind of thing that like God is trying to say is like, Hey, you're not, this is not a good representation in the world. If all you're doing is completely rejecting and denying, and like if you just went out and broke laws all the time, because you're like, well, screw it. It's, it's the government. I'm, they should not have any authority over me at all. That doesn't, society won't be able to function in that way. I go in, I can steal whatever I wanted to steal. But that's the thing. Society, society is not, I mean, not everybody is, is Christian and, and not everybody making laws are Christian as well. And they're trying to box people into certain rules and laws and things that they have to do or can't do. And I'm like that you're not coming from a Christian values perspective you're coming from a control power perspective and that's certainly not what jesus is about so why are we to follow a a, a governing body that yeah. w- would set up things that decrease our 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 freedom decrease our ability to be you know good people and help others because, uh, like, for example, the church has been castrated in in what they actually do as an organization because the government has, you know, opened up entities where, in a very crass way of, of helping people and, and those that are running those organizations make millions of dollars. It's like, I know it's a totally different podcast, but, you know, it's the idea of, like, the church was there to, to be the helping hand. Hey, go to the church. They can help you. And now it's like, oh, go to the government and there's some, you know, there's 10 different organizations, 501c3s or NGOs that you can get hooked up with. And, you know, I'm like, what happened here? We've lost like the ability for churches to enact what, you know, they do, which is be the hands and feet of Jesus. It's like, did that, does, is that stopping churches from doing that? It, it doesn't stop it, but it, it, it hasn't, it's actually kind of crucified a little bit of what the church is there nice. for crucified Whoa. that's good and i don't know i don't know if i agree with that i will say though th- is there any agency like is there any responsibility on the church for not stepping up one could say hey yeah church you drop the ball and in the absence of you stepping up other entities needed to step up and fill that void i think that coin flips both directions too where people give less to charitable organizations because of government stepping in and filling those gaps, which I, I don't think is a good thing overall. Like government saying, hey, we'll give you your basic needs. We'll do these welfare programs. And I'm not against like some sort of safety net for people that really need it. It didn't used to be that way, which is maybe what you're saying. It's like the church used to be the primary right. like frontline uh, give to the needy, help the poor, take take care of the underprivileged. Right. There was a... A, a Christian civility within the church that was there to, you know... And since you asked, that's the Sermon on the Mount, basically. It's yeah. like the church's mission. Yes. Quit trying to flex. <laughs> <laughs> Guys, I got I got kicked by a horse. Can you see? I think I got kicked by a horse right here. I'm going to kick you right now. <laughs> we here to pump you All up. Right. <laughs> we teased it. We're not doing a good job. Let's go back to... Let's, let's let him get his full thought out or here. Or we're doing a great job. Yeah. Well, that was... Ba- the point of that was like that God... Acha- God invented the the idea of the state, which you let us know what you think about that because I I disagree with that. I think there's a what's going on is like this. Hey, you want this? God, God gave us over to like. Hey, you want a king? Here's what's going to happen. Now we Do don't you think have a that's king. The same thing. Um, no, I don't. That's why I disagree with Josh. Like, turn your things sideways there. But you're not disagreeing with Josh. You're disagreeing with Paul. I'm disagree. Yeah, and I might be doing that too. I'm disagreeing with Josh's interpretation of Paul. I don't think. I honestly, I think Paul 
might be throwing a little bit of love towards the Roman government so his letter would not be stifled and confiscated and people arrested. Would He's have, saying, hey, the government's cool, but also read the rest of the letter. As opposed did, to just take this verse and this is ironclad. Hey, anybody that's in power, God put him there. And I I disagree with that wholeheartedly. Like, so you're you're under a dictator. Do what the dictator did. God has him there. It's like, fuck that. Who would agree with that? Everyone would have a line where they would break with this verse. I feel like I'm about to go Big Lebowski. Am I no, wrong? No. Am I wrong? <laughs> You're not wrong. <laughs> You're just an asshole. <laughs> go ahead. I just, quote. just just knowing more about <laughs> the two words that should that I would like to understand more in this context it, are <laughs> authorities and established. It, by the way, I did, I did fact check. Uh, Everyone is subject to the governing authorities, you know, and God set it up. All right, let's let's continue. Thank you, Jeff. Finally, let me make something. Uh, uh, what I hope is obvious. To I us. jump forward a couple if minutes. Godly people, thank God, won't lead their nation through voting. If godly people won't lead their nation, godless people will. God, the only people that are left become godless people. This is what the book of Proverbs means when it says this. Was when that a warning? When the righteous are in authority, the people rejoice, but when the wicked rule, people groan. Uh, so I'm gonna say something that has a bit of an edge to it, but I groan. need you to understand this biblically. <laughs> when Christians do not vote, what they're doing is they're abdicating their leadership position in the constitutional republic that God has placed you in. And it's a form of passive rebellion against God. That's a good place to pause. Yeah. I listened to the whole thing. Um, On a side note, he reminds me of the redheaded modern family. Uh, gay. I thought you said it was Elon Musk. No, now that he's facing us, Jeff, now he's a new character. Who is this? He, now it's the man. It, it's the mannerisms. Can I just yeah, say anyway. though, Jeff? And I, I forgive me. I already made one joke about your oversized shirts. That's what a fitted shirt looks like, Jeff. Doesn't look good. It looks pretty good. You could do that too, Jeff. Bros, Bibles, and Beer is brought to you by True Classic <laughs> Tees. <laughs> Oh, Jeff broke the fourth wall. That was perfect. That was perfect. Uh, I love that. That's my favorite moment of the podcast so far, <laughs> which is a thing I'm going to start doing right now is d declaring my favorite moment of the podcast. All right. Let it be so, known. Okay. So he's basically saying you are uh, abdicating your responsibility um, to God as a Christian if you don't vote. And you're in slight, did you say slight or mild? Misalignment. Slight rebellion. Rebellion. Slight you're, rebellion. You're in a mild form of rebellion against God if you don't vote. Now, you guys tell me what you think right after I tell you what I think. <laughs> um, I don't, I, I'm not going to vote for either major party t ticket th today. And I don't hold judgment against anybody who is going to do that and feels very strongly about that. Caveats over. But, do you guys think I am in rebellion against God? Now, I have very specific reasons that are well thought out. I'm not disconnected from the political re realities of the world. No, you're voting. According to you him. Are, are you going to, to vote? Yeah, you are voting by not voting. Yeah, I mean, no, I know you're trying now, to find... I, did, I didn't clip part of this message, but he goes on to say... Third party votes are not worth it. Yep. <laughs> yeah. If you're making a statement by voting for third party, nope, it's not going to make a difference. I don't know which clips you chose. I did listen to it, and I agreed with more than I disagreed with. And uh, so, are you are you going to go to a clip that talks about voting for third party candidates and how that's throwing your vote away? <laughs> no, okay. I, di I didn't do that one. Okay, no. Um, I just love that little mic drop moment of like you're in rebellion, a version of rebellion against God if you don't vote. So. One of the things that he mentions is that a lot of Christians will say, I can't vote in good conscience for either one of these two main candidates because for moral reasons or personality reasons or character reasons, I disagree with them. Maybe take out the moral piece. Character reasons, I disagree with them. So the, the common one, easy one would be, Abortion. I may agree with Donald Trump's policies, but I don't like who Donald Trump is as a person, 
And as a result, I don't feel comfortable voting for him. And the argument that he gives is personalities are temporary. And there's two, two of them. Personalities are temporary. Policies can last for a long time and be longstanding. And the second part of that is we are not called to vote for the perfect candidate. We're called to vote for the one who's closest to representing um, God, I don't more think godly. I don't know if we're called to that, though. Well, the argument that he gave, he, he gives three different styles of leadership. I the, should say I disagree that we're called Bible. to that. Well, are you disagreeing with just saying called? Or like, are we getting into semantics? Or to say as a Christian, it's it's better to do one thing than the other. Well, I will answer your question by saying something differently, <laughs> by not answering your question. Maybe it does answer your question. One of the things that disheartens me about any pastor that gets political like this is the almost total disregard to, or there's no examples of the way Jesus lived and did his ministry that are, that can be given to support what he is saying. I'm not saying that everything he's saying is bad and that Christians shouldn't vote and that voting your conscience. I'm not saying that that is a thing that should be preached against. Yeah. However, I don't think he can use Jesus' life and ministry to support what he's saying because he doesn't use it. He uses Old Testament examples. Uh, He uses Romans 13 out of context and, you know, whether it's true or not, different, different conversation, but what would be the most relevant passage in the New Testament from Jesus' life to tell you how to vote as a Christian for you? For me, it would, I can't, answer it the way you phrased it, but it would be that Jesus, the context of Jesus and the disciples and the fledgling church being under the boot of Rome, which was the total authority, they didn't get a say. There was no democracy there. Um, and there were no, there's no examples of Jesus trying to be a revolutionary to, to overtake Rome actually. And that's what I think Peter thought was going to happen. I think but is so, that, the, is that equivalent though? That feels like that doesn't feel like an equivalent. If you're vote, if you're like legally voting in a constitutional Republic. Yeah. So we, we don't have, we so don't it's have overtake. It's not a one-to-one, but Jesus was given chances to take over the state. Satan offered it to him. Like, all the kingdoms of the world are yours. And Jesus, it was one of the temptations. Jesus denied that. And I, I think that's worth considering. I, I, I think I see where you're going. I don't, I don't know if an overthrow is the same as like a democratically elected official. But he, he didn't even try to change Roman policy. So in the Bible, when there are not one-to-one examples of Jesus' life, we can point to other examples in the Bible where God is showing uh, examples. <laughs> uh, so, you know, and that's that's where I thought it was interesting. That, that assumes he sh- that God is that God is showing examples outside of human agency of writing and interpreting and editing scripture. At some point, if we can't agree on that, then maybe we can't talk about the Bible. Like, no, we have to have some. All we some, can do is some level. About- I mean, this reminds so, me. Of, so, this so, reminds me of Jubilee. We need to come to a common ground well, I, here. Yeah, I just mean like, <laughs> if you don't want to use the Bible, like, then we can't talk about Jesus. No, I want to use the Bible, and that's why I disagree with Mister Howerton. Um, his use of the Bible is taking examples from Scripture and ramming them into our context. Well, what which I, I think what is probably I, upside down. I don't know if he rammed it. I think gently shoved it. I think there was, I think he rubbed his neighbor. (laughs) (laughs) I I liked how he presented, here are three examples of what leadership of different types of leaders in the Bible. Oh yeah, the Jezebel and the Jehu was the other one? Yeah. And then the the Josiah was the good one. The righteous. And then there's this middle ground example too. Not perfect, but God used them. Probably wasn't saved, probably burning in hell forever, but God still uses them. And I think that's probably the, the... and I'm glad that he used that example because it, it, it is closest to probably what we encounter every single day. 
in in our typical political interactions. And I think the point that he was trying to make there is it demonstrates an example in scripture where God is saying this is an imperfect leader that I can that there can still be uh, the goodness that I want to happen in the world can still come from this type of leader. Yeah, I don't. And if if you're holding out for the perfect leader, if that's oh, your, yeah. if that's your litmus test, if that's your your threshold, no, then, no, then you will yeah. then you should never vote. You will never be able to vote. And I don't disagree with that. And that is not what I am personally doing, except for Pat Robertson in the '80s, right, Jeff? <laughs> I abstain. <laughs> I, I don't. I don't. I'm nowhere in the Bible does it call us to actually reinforce government uh, in terms of voting. It just says, well, there's no follow, 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 you know, what your government, I mean, in layman's terms, follow what your government says. They tell you to do something. You need to do it, pay taxes, uh, whatever it might be. And that's my point. Nobody would, everybody, if they're guys in power, yeah, everyone agrees with that statement. But as soon as it's Hillary Clinton, from my my background, or if, when the Clintons are in power, we ignore those vo- those those uh, those passages. Wait, wait, I don't understand. What do you mean? Like if Hillary Clinton follow was... follow what your leaders say, it's like everyone agrees yeah. with that when the person they like is in, and right. they ignore it when the person they don't like is is in. Right, but that goes against God's laws. I mean, Hillary Clinton's a female; she can't be in power. Forget okay. That forget that that's bes, beside whatever that to me. I guess great, Jeff. Bill was in too. What? <laughs> that was wait wrong. You guy. did part, Joe. <laughs> I guess Bill sounds like that now too. Yeah, he does. He sounds a little Bidenish. Uh, no, I I get I was it, never but on still, that airplane. <laughs> there you go. <laughs> <laughs> okay, I was never on that airplane seventeen times. <laughs> Where do you stop Hitler's in power? God put him there. We're going to go down that road. Great leader. Because that's what the Bible says. Right, right. But still, great leader. And we're going to look back 50 years and be like, what in the hell happened in the United States or in the world? Government. You should, okay, did you, you should define great, though. Yeah, let's. Uh, uh, great influ- you mean great is having the ability to have millions of people follow you in a very. Uh, I feel like you mean influential, a very okay. influential leader. Great leadership is the ability to get people to follow you. It doesn't matter what it is. I mean, we're looking at. So is the, that definitionally good? We're looking at the lens. Did he, well, do, no, did great, he do great things? Uh, great doesn't equal good. He. We're saving. We're protecting you. N- n- I, I realize what you, what you're getting at, but you said I, I said he's a great leader. Great leaders have the ability. Not only do they have, you know, they they're their rhetoric, their speeches, their their enthusiasm, they're driven and people follow. And when that happens, you're like, man, what a leader. So if you was go back- he, Was he a great Christ-like leader? I, you know what? Probably back in the late 30s, people believed he, he was. Back then. We, people we, believe- we're I'm, not ask, then. I'm asking you, because you just said a couple things that people want would want a little clarification on. Do you want clarification? Hell I yes. do. <laughs> uh, so I do. I do believe that Adolf Hitler was an incredible leader in that he got people to follow a and believe in a way that, like in that moment, was in, yeah, he's incredible. In, he's but influential for when, sure. When we look back, um. We and when any time we look back in history, the context has changed. Uh, the Bible never changes. The, the context has changed. Is it was it those were Christian ways to go out and wipe people out? Absolutely not. Um, also, a governing body. So we're kind of in. You know, now the governing body is going against God law. This God's is laws. my point: is nobody nobody follows that Romans thirteen. Everyone has a limit where they won't follow that, and they don't believe it. They just use it when it's convenient. And they should. They should not follow. If the Germans back then were using Romans 13, and I promise you some of them were. Sure. To follow the governing authorities, 
fuck that. Get it out because it's not love God, love your neighbor. I know. I feel like we're missing context. That's why I was like, there's a couple words there. I'd, I would like to get a little more detail on what they mean by established. What, what is meant by established and what is meant by authority. It's weird that Josh Howerton didn't provide more biblical context. Uh, anyway, I Shots do. Fired. Anyway, so let's, let's bring it full circle back to the point that, that, he had made earlier, which was, um, not, uh, not voting is dereliction of your duties effectively that you're in rebellion with God. And, and what I do think happens more often than not is that Christians will choose to not vote because they'll say, uh, the perfect candidate isn't, it doesn't exist there. Therefore, I cannot in good conscience vote for them. Yeah. And that that is not a totally unfair straw man, but I think it's still a straw man. So I would flip it on you. Where, where's your line to where it's like, you got, what if you have two supremely evil Jehu types in the Bible? You have to vote for the greater good. You have to. That should be your... That should be... Yeah, why? I'll put it this way. Where's your line? Do you why, have a line where you're like, I can't vote you? for either of these? Um, b- because if you just just use logic, like one of these two will win. One of these is worse than the other. Right. Would I rather have the worst one or the 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 better one? However, slight. Yeah, and I think your my argument is at a certain point. I'm not saying we're there now with these two candidates. I, I understand. I want President Camacho. All right. <laughs> That's what I'm looking for. And I'll hold out until Camacho. I can't. I'm trying to look, look List, at my sad little chest. Listener, he's trying to flex his pecs right now. <laughs> uh, okay. Uh, a la auto- idiocracy. No, that, that's, that's the way that I, that I interpret that. And, and the way that I read that is like, uh, if I hold out for the perfect candidate, I will be waiting forever. And, and if I abdicate, my responsibility as a voter, then effectively I'm, I'm not helping move the line towards things that I think God is more interested in and supportive in that are closer to the ideals of Christianity. Yeah. My, my problem I think with this stream of thought is that we're granting way too much power over our individual lives. We're like, we're sort of like succumbing to like, Hey, Do you want us to gonna, vote or not? Hey, should you vote? Never mind, it doesn't matter. What are you doing? You're subverting your own question. The the um the the problem is so this is where my anarcho Christian philosophy is going to come through. Um, and I I don't know which was the chicken or the egg. Like my whether it's like my political philosophy or it's the way my faith has developed, and it, it probably doesn't matter, but. Um, the state definitionally is something that is there to create and enforce laws through the power of the gun or the sword, live by the sword, die by the sword. So what, what we're doing is when we grant state power and in our context in America, once the state assumes some sort of power, power will be granted one direction or another. Like imagine that there is a, a midpoint. And it goes one direction or the other. One direction is towards the is closer towards a Christian biblical Judeo Christian belief system. Yeah, and and the other direction is away heart is away from. Only that was true. Well, I mean, at, at some point you have to make it has to go one way or the other, right? I mean, what the state the state's gonna empires are gonna empire. My point is like you, no, 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 no. But like you, you get, get your guy in. That you think is better. I'm just saying it, it has definitionally has to go one direction or the other. Nothing exists purely in the middle balanced on a laser point. Right. So yeah, if your choice is, can I, it, will my vote help this move in one direction? My, your vote will help it move in one direction. Which direction would you rather it move in? I think your vote will make you feel like it's moving in one direction or other. But uh, if I assume that's true, your vote goes to the guy and say you get the guy or gal in that that is better. 
better than the other one. Moves towards a direction. Are they going to create new laws in whatever direction? Maybe. And is it possible that the power that they use to build in the future, somebody else gets that power. They get the one ring. This is where the analogy is perfect. You've given them the power already. You've set up a scenario where the other person that's directionally bad. So would you ra- so you would rather take the poison pill than than the chance of it never of it potentially happening somewhere down in the future. I would rather go the way and maybe this is the poison pill. I don't know. I think I think Jesus took the poison pill. But I don't want at least right now, like I don't want to I don't want to take part in so Trump did less war than was before, but also he continued support for Saudi Arabia that was conducting a genocide on people. And then the other way is like I saw I actually saw a tweet where George Bush or somebody tweeting for one of the Bushes was like Anybody want to apologize to me right about now? Which, <laughs> which is kind of funny, right? Because of like how chaos, chaotic it's gone. And then I saw one political commentator who's an anarchist I follow tweeted back. It's like a million Iraq dead Iraqi women and children might disagree. It's like th- this is what happens with empire building, and this is what you're buying into in small ways. And that's why I am not taking part. I might write somebody in. But regardless, we are buying into this idea that like we're giving power, we're like eliminating our individual agency, and I think that's a mistake. I think, I think individual Christians. So I get what you're saying. You may, I, I get your point. What the argument against that is by you voting for the third party, it is effect. It can it can be interpreted effectively as a vote for towards the negative, t- towards the known negative. Yeah. So I should be, f- and that, that's all wh- things being equal. Yeah. Give yourself, give humanity the chance towards the possible positive rather than the known negative. Yeah. I, I just, I love the, the idealism you're showing the possible positive well, it, is an illusion currently. Well, it's mostly, well, it's maybe it's not. I'm fewer. already, I'm already caveating. <laughs> In the other direction. Th- things that... Okay, I'll, I'll just... Uh, I'll say this. On the count of three, we'll all say who we're voting for. Ready? <laughs> <laughs> no, but... Uh, are there fewer wars? Okay. That feels like that's... Um, By the way, that's a, that's a positive in my book. That's a positive, right? The Trump, that's a positive for Trump in my book. Yeah. Was it... But, but again, like... So, so... Excuse me. I've... I have set aside for myself the idea that that I I'm going to have the perfect candidate that I and I'm that I can't. I've got to try to look for more good good than there is bad. Right, but surely there is a line where there is a line. And don't be, call me Shirley. Yes, is that the line? Great airplane reference. I knew it. Where where is your line though? Um, There's a point where you you would not take part because it's violating your conscience too much. Uh, the type of people that are running it well so I don't know if I'm someone who would consider consider themselves like a one uh, one issue voter I'm not a single I'm not a single issue voter so at some point there I will look at it and go well you've tipped the scales now in the wrong direction now you are now you're no longer a net positive whatever whatever the conglomeration of things are that that equal that in my personal opinion yeah then, then that's the point where I'll make it. So it's hard for me to give you like a super clean answer, but I will say there, there, there could come a point where I go, nope. But there is a reality that you can imagine and that's where you would, I'm not going to do this. Not going to do what? Not going to vote for vote. anybody? Yeah, vote for a president. The logical oh, for, part, a, for a major party. The logical part of me says, there's no way, <laughs> it's okay. We're getting played off right now. I know we are getting played <laughs> off. It's because I forgot to delete the little outro. Our listeners won't hear this. Okay, it's okay. Oh. Right now the theme song is playing and it's hilarious. Oh, it's good. playing in our ears. Well, that's fine. That's fine. It'll be over enough. So let's test our ability to focus. I know. I'm just gonna take my earphones off. So um, that's funny. They might hear the headphones. 
I think the likelihood that we would find a perfectly like matched uh, duo in terms of of that like which which direction are you sending us? So it, is so unlikely, right? But what you're admitting to, without admitting to it, is we're it's just little compromises. It's constant compromises. Oh, I'll admit to it right away. That's that's the whole point. If you if you the moment that you admit I can't find the perfect candidate, therefore I need to find someone who is closer to the ideals that I care about. Yeah. That openly admits that there has to be compromise. And I think that's the core of what Josh is saying in that point is yeah. if you're waiting for a no compromise uh candidate, you will wait to the grave. And I don't disagree with that. Um but I do disagree with in this, in our context where we have the freedom, like voting or not voting is a freedom either way. And when he says you're abdicating your responsibility, yeah. actually, we'll probably skip the, the clip, but there's another clip that I uh, pulled where he does say 30 million Christians in 2016 didn't vote. And they abdicated their responsibility in the last election. Um, I think that's disappointing. And, but the thing is, like, that's their free right to do. And, and, it's and my, he's of course, of course, it is. He I'm doesn't not, say it's not their free right. But they're they're abdicating their responsibility to God. And I don't think your, there's which, which any biblical your, evidence for that. Um, there is no biblical reference for a constitutional or like a, a democratic republic in the Bible. It was kings, it was leaders, it was I I, I suppose so, Rome had some sort so of the argument, thing going on. The argument that he but makes that makes there, my case even more because G, there's no evidence of Jesus trying to get Christians to do that. Um, is there evidence of Christians in the Bible advocating for Christian values? Kind of like the no earphones right now. By the way, it feels nice. The government, the nice. government. I mean, those in government are supposed to be fighting for Christian values. They're supposed to be. I don't think that's true at all. Uh, okay, so this is. It's worth noting at this point that Jesus and Paul were Jewish, and the, they didn't stop being Jewish. Right. So um, let's see. Everybody must submit. They weren't Christians. Okay. So the. <laughs> oh. <laughs> So the everyone must submit to the governing authorities. It's in his name, Jesus Christ. <laughs> the, therefore, those uh, who rebel against the authority is opposing God's institution. Okay, s skip forward. For rulers are not a terror to good conduct, but to evil. So rulers, they're a terror to evil. Those in gov those that are ruling government are a terror to evil. Uh, would you like to have no fear of those uh, in authority, do what is good, and you will you will receive praise from him because he is God's servant for your benefit. Those in government are God's servant for your benefit. So, if we're following the government, the expectation is that they are servants of God. This is demonstrably but untrue. Pick any murderous dictator. We already talked about Hitler. Pick Geng Genghis Khan. There's pl you don't even have to. You can go you, in the Bible. There's plenty of terrible rulers. Correct. And if you then go Herod. farther, if if it goes against God's law, you are not to follow that government. I mean, that's a caveat you're adding. That that's within the Bible. It literally says. I, I don't disagree with that concept at all. Um, but. My beef with the Romans 13 is we, we use that when it's convenient. It's like people like, oh, what, what about the Constitution? Nobody cares about the Constitution. They only care when it's convenient for their specific needs. Um, and that's the thing. It's like that, that and maybe it goes back to what you view the Bible is. Like I, for me, it's like, oh, it says it in the Bible. Therefore, it's equally authoritative as anything else in the Bible. It's like, no, we got to talk about the individual context. So if Paul does mean God put that ruler there, you follow them, case closed, I disagree with Paul. And so 
Maybe that's that's my heresy slash, but I, I think it demonstrably Paul disagreed with the government based on his life. So there, there's something missing here, and yeah, there's something there's lost in more, translation. Maybe there's a little more context that would be helpful, which is why I kept coming back to like, I would like and to I don't understand think we the have, established. I don't know if we have piece. access to that context it too, which is wild. Because, because again, there's no shortage of terrible examples of leaders in the Bible, and they don't. They're not portrayed as okay to follow. Right. They're portrayed as right bad dudes. Right. So. I'm it's not, a bad I, dude, I, man. It's a bad dude, man. It's clearly uh, God isn't ignorant of the, those facts, and the authors in the Bible aren't ignorant of those facts. It's it's obvious. So, but but I, I want to come back to my point that I or my question that I asked earlier, which is um, advocating advocating for positions of righteousness, advocating for goodness, and I think that that is that we're commonly like it's, it's not hard for us to search for that in the Bible that, that no. we're called to advocate for, for, for goodness. And I don't think it's a stretch to say that choosing to vote for the candidate that you think is more, more closely, even if it's by hair, more closely aligned with advocating for righteousness yeah. and goodness in the world is a way that you can by second hand advocate for righteousness. And I, I don't disagree with that. It's just where I'm at currently is I've yeah. reached my limit to where I, I'm willing to take part in a way that violates my conscience. So I know everyone has their line and I, my big disagreement is, is calling anybody that doesn't vote because what he's saying is vote for my guy. He, in the, th- the bullshit part of his sermon, well, it's not even a sermon. I'm with you. I, I didn't disagree with, I, I agreed with a lot of it. Um, in theory, but when they say he says I I'm not here to endorse a candidate, it's bullshit. He is. <laughs> he's not going to say vote for Trump, but that's what he's saying voting for Trump. It's like he's talking to toddlers. And also, I don't think by law he can endorse a candidate on no. a Sunday. I think he no. probably ha- he has. I think to there's be a violation vague. of your 501c3 status if you end up doing that. There's something in there. So which- it's t- that part of it is total horseshit, and everyone knows it. Um, even if voting for his guy is the right thing to do, which obviously you can tell, I don't think it is, but I, I'm not going to hold it against people that do. Okay. Okay. I'm done caveating, but, but every election season, I have friends that are like, I don't care who you vote for. It's your right. You must vote. It's like, but you kind of do. <clears throat> what if I vote for the wrong person? What if I vote for the person you hate? <laughs> not you. I'm just saying this person and people that are very real in my social media life. Like, just vote. It's your right. Um, nobody thinks that. So I think I've just grown weary enough of those well, contradictions to where I'm like... Maybe you don't think that. I think that... But maybe not nobody. The the idea of voting as an American citizen, I think it's important that everybody votes. Like everybody put, have some skin in the game. So there's some debate uh, of... Or, or you're just... You're like, I, I'm. this is my person and this is why. As opposed to, I'm um, just, you know, uh, this whole system, uh, you know, I'm cynical about it and it just, it doesn't function. It's like, okay, well, you know, a part of the process is, is voting, is to be involved, is to get in, involved in, you know, the, the yeah. systems that you're part of. Like, I'm, you the know, difference what? is it's not a biblical process. It's a process. Yeah, it is a governing have, authority. It's not wrong in nature, but the, the, I think the difference is some Christian leaders are, using the Bible to make it seem like a biblical process. Wait, 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 wait. I think you're overreaching there a little bit. It's your biblical duty to vote is basically what he's getting into. If you're not voting, you're in, you're in passive rebellion against God. If, yeah, but I think that he's talking, like, like I said earlier, just because it doesn't spell, are, are you, you're not hung up on the idea that just because it doesn't spell this out specifically in the Bible that you shouldn't advocate for leaders who support righteousness. There's plenty of no. like non-direct examples. No, of that and in I can Bible, think right? of plenty of people I would want to be leaders in this country. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And that, who I would vote for. Right. Um, but making a mandate and saying, hey, if you're a Christian, be careful. You're rebelling against God. If you don't take part in the bullshit two-party system that all of us would agree the two-party thing is kind of rigged and a joke. But yet every four years, we all like, 
well, yeah, but this time we really gotta, we just gotta do it. So I, I look, yes, every four years, do we all have to look at this and go, here's the sandwich that's in front of us? You gotta hold your nose. Here's the sandwich that's in front of us that we, we all get to take a bite out of. Yeah. But that's where I thought his interesting point was if you're waiting for the perfect candidate, you'll wait until you're dead. Yeah. And so how are you trying to move the ball forward in a way that is closer to the things that you think God Which is, is a reasonable in? stream of thought and I like and I, I appreciate it. And so I'm if, just saying if you, that is your th- if the that best is your- way the best way forward might be to wait until you're dead. <laughs> I'm just kidding. Well no, because then th- that's his point is that you you are actively not helping move things forward. And so by default, you're helping them move backwards. Well, to him, to him, everything is moving backwards. We're just slowing it down. Which I thought which, was interesting. Which is a point I disagree. I, I don't know how that lines up with the kingdom of God expanding like a mustard seed. I feel like that's a contradiction for most Christians. Is like the world is always going to get bad. That's the only way it's going to go until Christ comes back. And he, he, that's kind of where uh, he's at. Well, there, Revelation has some of that in there too. Like, yeah, you know, and I, I just think that it's it's a shitty interpretation, and I think it's a contradiction of Jesus saying the kingdom of God expands. And I think there's evidence of the kingdom of God expanding. This is good news, by the way. The kingdom of God expanding. The more people become disciples of Christ and actually live into the love God, love your enemy, love your neighbor. That's the kingdom of God expanding the world will get better and it can get better. And it ties into the correct, in my view, interpretation of revelation is a renewed heavens and earth, not a different heavens and earth. I like that too, but it, it can get worse before it gets better. Yeah, for sure. Yeah. But so far it's like a stock market. It's like, there's a lot of downs and a lot of ups. We might be in a down period, but overall for like general well-being of more and more people you can make an argument that things have been are are better generally just on various metrics see steven pinker and people like him which there's holes in that too but whatever different conversation there's holes in steven pinker yeah <laughs> <laughs> gross anyway so i i don't disagree with your philosophy i just think right where i'm at now i'm at my limit to where it's like I voted. I will not. I voted third party last time, and I had mixed feelings about it. I felt like it was more symbolic than anything. And the the year before, or sorry, the um, election before, I voted for Donald Trump, and I I am going to vote for Donald Trump again this year. <gasps> I know. Um, and I didn't need Josh Howerton to convince me that I would. Uh, that I needed to be voting know, for something a, that moves the ball forward. You're a grown ass man. Yeah, but um, but that does align more closely with my like philosophy and theology, which is if there often we are we are put in the position of the lesser of two evils. That's um, and as I get older, I think maybe different from you, I feel more comfortable with that. Um, Hoping that that if change is going to happen, even if it's incremental, even if it's small, I'd, I'd prefer that. And so, for my view and interpretation of the two uh, candidates' values and their what they what I think they're going to do, if I'm forced to decide, Donald Trump is closer to what I'm. I think what I'm hoping would outcomes would be. Now, who knows? People how get in office how, and do crazy stuff. How do you feel about people that are voting? For the same reasons, but they're voting for Mrs. Harris. Yeah. Lesser of two evils. I get it. I think that we have different definitions of, or uh, different values on our scales of evil. feels like a really heavy word there. I don't want to throw that around, but like, um, if if you're charting the top 10 of thing, things that you care about, maybe things that are at the top of their list are not the things that are at the top of my list. Jeff, what fascinates me about you is that you voted for Obama twice. Yes, we can. No, sorry. Twice before Obama, that was were you, the, were you was always Obama Republican? Thing. Uh, no, I went um, Ross Perot. Whoa, Bush you voted third party before 
anybody uh, before it was cool. Dude, I loved Ross Perot. Now, let me tell you. Okay, can, look at this. Look at this right here. Okay? Can I finish? Okay? Can I finish? Right here. Okay. In he Texas, was... <laughs> there's lots of oil. We drill. We're gonna. Everything's gonna be great. All right. R- Ross Perot, original Kamala. <laughs> can I finish? Can I finish? <laughs> can I finish? Can I finish? Can I finish? <laughs> Remember him on uh, Saturday Night Live? Yeah. Dana right. Carvey. Can I finish? <laughs> can I finish? Can I finish? Uh, uh, then Bush, Clinton. Um, was that to Clinton? You voted original Bush, then you voted Clinton, then you voted second Bush? Second Bush. Or did you um, vote Al Gore? I did. No, I did. I, did I vote for Nader Bush? No, no, no. I I think I'm. Nader. I think I voted for Bush, Hardly or nor. or I was or I was sleeping at the wheel. I don't recall. And then I went Obama, Obama, Trump. Man, Tr- you are Trump. all over the place. It's just gonna be three times Trump. It went Man. Obama, Obama, Trump, 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 and three Trumps. So you're voting more than once. <laughs> this election that's three times uh, like 2016 Trump, Trump. 2020 and okay. 2024 vote early vote often <laughs> vote early. <laughs> <laughs> i got people worrying I think that's, that's fascinating like i know we're we probably out of time but yeah. we're we're in this season of like oh if you vote for that person you're evil if you vote for that person you're evil it's like for half the country in a week the world is ending no matter what happens and that's not true uh, we got a couple of that's, soup cans. We're ready. We got a Campbell's soup. Uh, we got some water. That's not, I've been told my whole, and the reason I believe this, I've been told. Hey, this is the biggest, this is the biggest election of, of your life. In history. Yes, in history. Which brings me to our sponsor, uh, Protein Packs Unlimited. If you are needing to stock up for the apocalypse, you got to get Protein Packs Unlimited. <laughs> protein Packs Unlimited, by the way, if you hear this podcast and you'd like to sponsor us, we're open to Is it. that a real one? I don't know. I just Freedom food. It seems like freedom food would be a thing. That's Freedomfood.com yeah. backslash bros into the promo code bros and you'll friendly freedom food. Friendly. <laughs> I do I do see myself as very open to whatever is, you know, in the moment. And so, you know, my I like that about you. Voting for you like know a certain fart candidates. In the wind. No, I, it's not a fart in the wind. It's like, okay. You evaluate each candidate. Absolutely. And it doesn't go beyond the the two candidates, except for Ross Perot. Um, and you know, today looking at, I I don't see it as the lesser of two evils. I absolutely believe Donald Trump is is a a, a good person. He's a good. He has a good family. Um, He's mostly honest. He, he loves a, he 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 loves America. He stepped into something that really he didn't want to and i'm like this is somebody who's sacrificing um and so i don't see it as evil i see the i see the other side as up to no good and i think we're feeling the you know the pains of that over the last three and a half years and you know it's worrisome and i'm like you you are not you're not americans you you, you could really care less about Wait, not my, americans not could not americans in the sense of like america Red, white, and blue. Um, in God we trust. They they flipped the script on everything, and they were all for it. And now they're like, okay, uh, oh gosh, we're you know what? We might not get, we might not stay in power. Uh, we need to start. We need to go into overdrive mode and and fix all of this. And it's like too little, too late. You burned every bridge, and it's done. It's going back. You know, we're going back to. 2017, 18, 19, when everybody in this country, for the most part, was doing pretty darn good. You're evaluating them on their records, what they've done. Well, what's well, what's fascinating is the fact that uh, the Democrat side is like, you know what this person's going to do, what Donald Trump's going to do? I'm like, you do remember Donald Trump was in office for four years, and everything was pretty good. So... I look at that and I'm like, I think when he wins, the next four years will be somewhat the same. Wrong, Jeff. He's just been waiting until now to destroy the Constitution. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> exactly. This is his This moment. is the end. Yeah, that's it's the, all part of his master plan. Yeah. But guess what? We can't we can't uh, win elections if we tell people things are basically okay and we would just nudge things in one direction or the other. Everything has to be the worst or the best. 
and both both sides excel at that. Um, I, by the way, I, I I don't think it's as like fine out like get out in a microscope and see if you can tell the difference. I think it tends to be more than that. In terms of like which way, if if we're balancing towards one direction or the other, yeah, I, I don't think it's so hard to tell. Is it nuanced for sure? Um, are there does each team potentially score points on either side of the board? Yeah. Do you know when In God We Trust came around? This is where Zach tells us. I'm in teach God you. we trust, and in the uh, Pledge of Allegiance, and from? you know teach this was just this was only added five years ago. Uh, Basically, go ahead. <laughs> I mean, in the in the I think late fifties, sixties, like we just we picture like America founded. We want to believe the Christian nation thing, and but it's like, like, why is that a terrible thing? I'm not saying it is, but sounds like you are. I'll, why often, do you hate God, and why do you hate America? Well, where do I start? <laughs> Actually, why do you hate the fifties? Maybe it's maybe it's growth to heaven on earth. You know, it's like, hey, in God we trust. Uh, like even our money says it. The problem is it built into the Christians, built into us Christians is our Christian civility. You're, you're the being, need for forgiveness. Maybe you're being ultra literalist here though, because there's plenty of in 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 the Declaration of Independence and in the um in the Constitution uh Examples where it's God-given inalienable inalienable rights. So simply to put right. something like on right. your money that says "In God We Trust" is not and, a leap of. And I do. I don't. I I think the idea of rights that exist and are not granted by a state is a beautiful thing. Um, no, no, no. It's not about that. It's about it's connecting it to the. Uh, I'm assuming that you're you're saying that. Adding "In God We Trust" to our money in the fifties. Oh, we just we just somehow used those... an indictment that the founding fathers did not be- trust in God. The the leader leaders abuse that for their own end. Yeah, I mean, you got Thomas Jefferson who was a flawed human being. Yeah, no, I'm not. Ta- Look at someone throwing the first stone over or, or, here. Or is it that we went? Or is it that we went through uh, a world war and so many years later, it's like you know. There's suffering. Can you believe the early, the early American people who become the early Americans didn't agree with God that their leaders were put there by God, and so we rebelled. We came over here and we fought them. I'm just saying it's complicated. And my point about the God we trust is like Christians will use those things to for their own ends and often abuse them. Thomas Jefferson, well, what I was going to say about that is and he came up with his own, own version of the Bible where he removed all the miracles. So the way these people believed in God, some of them might have looked like a Christian today, but are you and a lot lo- of so them you're looking for have. total solidarity and complete like s- complete I- identical belief theology between everyone who would be considered a founding father. No, I'm just rejecting the idea that we need to make the state a Christian state. I think it's stupid and it will go wrong and it has gone wrong every time uh, a a nation has become a a, like used, become like anytime there's been state religion under God, it goes, that's a jump. I think the state gets weak. You're making, or the making a leap though. The church gets weak. You guys, you're making a leap. Any chance we can agree to disagree and and uh, and land the plane? Just, uh, this is some old school lap did, running, did, did, Jeff. Did, did, did some old school lap running here. Okay, this, everybody, grab your lap. grab your glasses. I know it's started, a new lap. We're gonna do four <laughs> laps around in a new race. All right, so okay, <laughs> if Jesus is voting today. Oh, here we go. Who's he voting for? <laughs> Oh my God! We're just assuming that he's going to he's, vote. He's voting for now, Ka- he's voting for Kamala, Kamala. K- no, no, K- hold Kamala. on, hold on. I think, and I'm going to tell you why. I think if the human Jesus was transported here and now, I don't think he would vote. But let's pretend he is going to vote. I just did. Kamala. Yeah. You want to know why? Why? Sinner. Lost. He's going to go and you went, lift her up. You look at you. By Does he need to for vote her. for her to do that? Yeah. He's going to be on her side. He's going to find a way to, to make her whole. I did not see this coming. Neither the did I. Interesting part is, by that logic, Donald Trump, not a sinner. <laughs> and actually, he believes that. <laughs> <laughs> do, you, do you believe that? Amen. My, do you believe of, that? 
favorite things I heard Trump say is like, I don't think I've done anything that requires forgiveness, which is good news because if Jesus was here, he'd be like, well, thank God I found the one guy I don't have to die for. <laughs> I think we have both candidates this in that awesome. camp there. Uh, Kamala has not made a mistake and this is D- true. Trump has not... Uh, has nothing to require forgiveness. So good news, guys. Yeah. It's going to make the decision of who you vote for even more difficult because we have found two perfect people. The two perfect righteous <laughs> candidates. That's so good. If if Jesus was here and he's going to vote, this is going to surprise no one and also piss off everyone. It would be a writing candidate for somebody sort of in the vein of your logic of Jill vote Stein. For, vote for Kamala. <laughs> but no, it'd be somebody that's like, hey, Look who I voted for. Here's why it's the least expected. Mm. And maybe think about why I would want that person to have this sort of power. Yeah. But I know that's kind of perfect. <laughs> so <laughs> go ahead, Andy. Tell him, tell us he's going to vote for Trump and then we'll move on. <laughs> <laughs> well, as you were saying that, I was like, yeah, but like God did bless. There's examples of him like blessing and supporting leaders in the Bible describes that Moses for example yeah right um, as long as they were atten- well as in as much as that they, they could follow him with exceptions of yeah. up, right again it's it's like hopefully it ends up more good than bad plenty of flawed leaders it's not utopia no David lots of screw ups dude might have been a terrible dad potentially more He's a terrible husband ups. yeah and a terrible husband and a terrible husband. Terrible. How many wives did he have? Also, ter- terrible bro. <laughs> so many husbands. Not a good is this the wives. after party? This is the after uh, party. Like this is for Patreon <laughs> to get more of this. I don't know. I actually don't know. I, I, I don't know if I can have an answer on whether or not he would vote or not. Well, this is I'm a fun sure. hypothetical know, that you're ruining. I know. I don't. I, it's It's hard. It's, you, it, this is difficult. But, you know what? Do it, in, do it November 5th. Yeah. You know what? I have an absentee ballot on Jesus' behalf, <laughs> and I will cast it. I actually have like four mail-in ballots. Should I use them all, Jeff? How do you have four Shush. mail-in ballots? I'm just kidding. Oh. <laughs> Everyone's so afraid of like the mail-in vote being rigged. Oh, yeah. Like, I do have a couple, though. My wife has a couple of female-in ballots. Oh! Female. In. Coma? Mail-in. Female-in. Um, female-in. <laughs> Famali. Hey, uh, well, let's get out of here. We're not going to do feedback. We ran out of time, uh, but keep sending it in. And we love you all. And uh, we appreciate you, even if you're going to vote for the wrong person, which guess what? Zach thinks you probably are. If you That vote. guy's voting for the wrong person right there. <laughs> oh, yeah. I'm definitely voting for the wrong person, according to uh, certain Christian pastors. And that's okay. But it's not without reason. It's not a checkout. Hey, what if everyone didn't vote at all? How many votes would people have to go after and why? That makes a difference. I'm what? Gonna, what are you even saying? If you don't vote as a protest and if enough people did that. What do you mean how many votes? Don't you think people, don't you think politicians would start to go after people that are checked out? Like, hey, why are those people checked out? Maybe there's a good reason. Maybe I should go and see what their needs are. Because we can't actually hold elections? No, because you just don't vote. I know. If no one votes, you can't have an election. Yeah. That's utopia in my book, but I'm not disagreeing. <laughs> <laughs> All right, I got him. <laughs> what government will God put in uh, authority if there's no? I'm the authority. You know what, real quick, like l- literally, we're offloading way too much power to people that are beyond our control, and I think we can all agree. Like we there, didn't. there are a lot of. We didn't talk about that part. That, so, that, so much of what is going on right now is like, what, what, will they, what will they do for you? What can you do for your okay. community and for yourself? And I think that's where the church can step back up and fill voids of like taking care of needs and addressing real thing boots on the ground. And there are actual organizations going that operate right now that you can support and maybe get involved in that are not the government, that aren't bound by those things, that are actually doing the hands and feet of Jesus. I think that's worth doing. He wants the church to not be the hands and feet of Jesus. He wants other outside entities to be the hands and feet of Jesus. Honestly, the last three minutes, I think we're just offloading way too many words. You just Kathy Newman the shit out of me right there. Okay. I was actually saying the opposite. Why don't we hold on to that? Landing gear coming down. 
Can Landing we, gear can we <laughs> use that as a follow-up topic? We'll tease that for the post-election show. We'll, because we'll, because we'll, whoever's someone's going to be elected, and then we can talk a little bit about what uh, the Christian perspective is of um, how much power we allow them to have in our lives and how much we rely on our government to do things versus us taking responsibility. I just hope, it, I just hope after the election we have a studio to record in. <laughs> They're going to come for us. No, it's okay. I can, they can interpret what I said as being a, a vote for whichever party's in power, so I think we're safe. All right. All right. For Jeff, Zach, I am Andy. This is Bros, Bibles, and Beer. Right. Grace, peace, peace cheers. cheers. Love God, rub your neighbor. <laughs> <laughs> <laughs>